still at work? Yeah, yeah, I am. So I want to get the video done. Okay, so. Did you bring your camera? Yeah, I did. Did you bring your laptop? Yeah. Remember your toothbrush? What are you, my mom? Ah! What? Are you serious? <laughs> Mind blown. I need idea. <laughs> I'm dumb. Deli hard. We get to the game, please. Yeah! I brought my, you know what? Leafs win! F that phone is broken. Leafs win! 4-2 over the Phoenix Coyotes. And you might notice I'm shooting this from a special location. Just after my night shift here, helping out with highlights at CBC Sports. Back in for the morning because there's training because this little thing called the Olympics is coming up. Didn't make much sense to go home between shifts, especially considering I had to do this video, so pfft, being two floors under where they shoot Coach's Corner isn't a bad place to be. Thinking about how these videos started, it's actually kind of nuts. So the Leafs. First five game win streak in seven years. I didn't realize it had been that long. And then I thought of the Leafs of the last five years and went, hmm, imagine this sentence. Vesa Toskala helps Leafs to fifth straight win. Teams better look out because Martin Gerber and the Toronto Maple Leafs are coming in hot. There's a reason that doesn't sound familiar. The Leafs had a huge first period. Leafs outshot the Phoenix Coyotes, outshooting a team every time I get excited. It's like Leafs outshooting a team, Haley's Comet, Leafs winning a cup. Jake Gardner bags one, hmm? And Phil Kessel bags another one. And this isn't going to be an advantage stats rant but one thing that I talk about and a lot of people talk about are just the ebbs and flows of numbers. Remember when Kessel was like top five, top ten in scoring earlier in the season? He dropped off didn't he? Last I checked he was somewhere around like 25th, 30th. Well just looking at the NHL.com stats right now he's ninth. He scored his 50th point in this game and in doing so became just the ninth player so far this season to hit 50. Ovechkin's only got 49 but he's done it in four fewer games than Kessel but still Ovechkin. And in the second period scoring his first of the season Season, Carl Gunnarsson, what? Puts the Leafs up 3 0. And you know, one thing I wanted to say, I wanted to rant on the Leafs a little bit because they took their foot off the gas. The Leafs were outshot 29 to 15 in the second and third period. The Leafs only had 29 shots all game. But what outweighs that is this the Leafs were due to have a game where you could look at the defense and go, Sup, bruh. Thanks for having my back, bruh. No problem, bruh. And they high five and stuff. Gardner chips in with a goal. Gunnarsson chips in with a goal. That's secondary scoring. I think too much with this team, we've focused on, oh, Kadri's in a slump. That's why the Leafs are hurting so much. Oh, Clarkson's been so bad this season. Oh, Kuhleman's got to turn this on. Most of the teams that are good at scoring have defensemen who are good at scoring. And one thing that's been obvious all season long is the Leafs' defense can't get it done in their own end. But they're gifted offensive guys. Let them go free. Be free. The Leafs have Jonathan Bernier and James Reimer in net. You don't want to get in a shootout with them. And I don't even mean a literal shootout. You want to get into one of those even less. The Leafs have offense, but it's a young team. You want to develop them into more than they currently are, so you can't just be like, ah, forget learning half of the game. So I guess I get it. But the defensemen have been letting it fly a bit. Everyone got a little distracted after Kadri's crazy move against Yamelin, but the guy who finished it off right in Carey Bryce's face was Cody Franzen, a defenseman. And similarly, how the Coyotes let Gunnarsson get in that close? I noticed Fanuf has been even more aggressive than he usually is lately. These are exactly the sort of things where people are like, why don't you watch the games? I watch them. And the Leafs do have some of the problems that they've had all year, even last year, but the improvements that they're making, I like them. Speaking of improvements, Nazem Kadri. Another two point night, five points in his last three, and the look Ah, oh, on his face when he scored that goal. Complete relief. And he deserved it. Then, like a couple minutes later, he makes a bad pass. Coyotes come down the other way and make the Leafs pay. It's a 4-2 game. And Carlisle screams at Kadri from the bench. You just see him making this scowl and he's barking at him. And right away, I'm on Twitter like, that's BS and we've heard all this stuff about Carlisle and Kadri and oh, you could tell he really likes him. And the problem with Twitter is it's not always very contemplative. So I can just boop a doop a doo F you send about anything to anyone at any time in about five seconds. But I thought about it a little bit. And I thought about this other time that Nazem Kadri scored a goal to put the Leafs up 4-1. It was in the playoffs. I uh, couldn't tell you what year. I think it was game seven. And the look on his face said, this series is over. Ah, just complete elation. That face was looking forward to the Rangers. That face said, work is done. And when you want to get all over Kadri, it was the entire Leafs team thought it was done. So Kadri scores this goal. Ah, complete relief. 
goofs up. So I don't blame Carlisle for going, we've been through this. That being said, I don't think Carlisle's kind of crawl into a turtle shell strategy is really good for protecting Leeds either, but that's a different discussion. Bernier has another stellar night. What else is new? The Leafs goaltending is sick, and they win their fifth straight game. And a stat that's been making the rounds, the last time the Leafs had a four-game slump and then came back with a five-game win streak, 1967. Plan the parade! One last thing, it would be stupid to complain in the middle of a five game win streak, but let's give it a shot. Heading into this game, Carter Ashton was 783rd in the NHL in shifts per game with 9.5. He barely played in this game despite a first period breakaway and he got an assist. At what point do they let this kid play? I know they're winning, but Carter Ashton's a pretty recent first rounder. You traded Keith Ollie to get him. He's performed well in the AHL. He's got the skill set whenever he's on the ice for like two seconds. He's not some plug goon with no future. The Leafs have turned some pretty young players into some pretty good players through development. And you know what? Whether the Leafs are winning or the Leafs are losing, Randy Carlisle demands more out of his team. So do I. So should all of you until they win a cup. There's a difference between good enough and good. And there's a difference between good and great. A five game win streak's good. Throw in some more minutes for Carter Ashton in there and that's great. Not much to complain about in a five game win streak, but if I had to add one thing to the wish list, there it is. Question of the game. Are you getting excited? You getting a little excited? Or does that kind of happen after the Olympic break? Because that's a pretty big distraction. That's it for this one because I I gotta get to bed. <laughs> Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. And I'm gonna break the fourth wall right now. I've been sitting on the floor the whole time. This is the elaborate thing the camera was on. I used the post-it notes to prop it up. That's my finger.